A lot of beginners have trouble with picking outdoor woods and finishing the outdoor projects so that they last. I'm gonna answer 10 of your most common questions about building outdoor projects, what types of wood to use, what types of finish to use, how to make them last as long as possible. And if you stick around, I'll give you a power tip on how to make that outdoor furniture last a very long time. Let's go. Chris Coleman, Justin Bohannon, and Bo Champion all kind of wanted to know the same thing. What's the best outdoor finish? And there's several to choose from and we'll go through all of them. Now, they kind of had different spins on it, like which one's gonna be outside all the time. In other words, full exposure to the weather. Some wanted to know best in the covered areas versus outdoor areas. There's a few different options to choose from as far as finishes goes, depending on the look you want. My personal favorite is a penetrating wood oil, AKA mostly you can think of it as an oil-based stain uh, for indoor projects, but I really, really like uh, Australian timber oil. It's made by Cabot and not sponsored. I've just used the product for a few years now and find it to hold up for a very long time. Take our outdoor sectional and chair bill, both of those creeping up on two years now, and I have yet to touch them. They haven't been refinished or anything, and they still look very, very close to the way they did the day I finished them. And it's held up well, still repelling the water like it's supposed to. I just really like that product. With penetrating wood oils, you don't have to worry about about it cracking or peeling because it gets down into the wood grain. Now you do need to think about maintaining that finish probably every two years or depending on how much exposure to the weather it may be a little more often, but any finish is going to need maintenance. There's also several other companies out there putting out products similar to this like Osmo, General Finishes, and different ones like that. You just wanna make sure you get the ones with UV protection so that it stands up longer in the sun. Spar urethane is also another option. While I don't care for spar urethane, I used it early on when I very first started woodworking. It's hard to get a really nice clean finish with it as far as no brush strokes or anything like that. And you have to put like four or five different layers on another coat. You have to put a coat on, let it dry for several hours, put another coat on and just build up that finish to get proper protection. And it just doesn't last very long. You're gonna have to reapply that about every year. And finally, probably one of the best outdoor finish you can use is an exterior paint. Now make sure you're using high quality exterior paints and don't cheap out here. If you buy the cheap stuff, you're gonna regret it in just a few months. And when you do paint it with exterior paint, it still requires maintenance. Make sure you keep an eye on it. Make sure it doesn't start chipping or flaking or cracking. If that happens, you're gonna to need to refinish that spot just to make sure you keep that wood sealed. And the reason it's probably one of the best wood finishes for outside is because it seals in that wood. Now I made this wood bench in November of 2017, the double arrow bench. We painted it red to begin with, and then Miss 731, we wanted to change the color. We wound up changing it to this dark blue. It held up extremely well, even outside, full sun, every day, in the elements, rain, sleet, or snow, it was just there. It, it held up extremely well. We sold it just a couple of weeks ago because we're changing up our deck and we're gonna build some more stuff out there. But the day I sold it, it looked just as good as the day I built it. So for applying the outdoor finish, you can spray it, you can brush it, you can rub it on if it's going to be like a stain, but I really prefer to spray it on because it gets in those gaps much easier. I like the Home Right Finish Max Sprayer. I've got a whole video on this, but I've used this sprayer for almost six years or a little over six years now, and I've had zero trouble with it. For about a hundred bucks, it's hard to beat this sprayer. Number two from Joshua Villalva, I wanted to know what's the best food safe wood finish. If you're talking outdoors, then really I wouldn't consider any of them food safe as far as prepping food on the table. But as far as if you drop something on the table, you pick it up and eat it, most all of your finishes made for wood are going to be okay because after they're cured, they're basically inert. Now, I'm not a scientist, I'm not any of that stuff, but for the most part, all, everything that you're gonna be using uh, after it's dried and fully cured, you shouldn't have any issues with that. Now, the only food safe finishes are things like mineral oil, those type finishes that are not really gonna hold up to outdoors, so you're not gonna use those as an outdoor finish. Outdoor woodworking projects are probably my most favorite projects of all time for two reasons. Number one, they were the best selling woodworking project for our business. I made more outdoor projects for people than anything else. And you get to spend time with family outside enjoying the great outdoors without a lot of distractions. I'd like to help you build some of those. If you go to our website, 731woodworks.com slash store, check out our outdoor projects as well as many other woodworking plans. If you use the code outdoor, I'll give you 20% off any project. Get out there and make some sawdust, sit outside and enjoy it. Number three on the list, Austin Franklin wanted to know, how do you prevent cedar from graying? And pine will do this, treated lumber will do this. The how you prevent that from actually turning gray. If you want to retain that natural color, then you're going to, want to use a clear finish. And those clear finishes we just talked about, the general finishes has a clear finish. Osmo has a clear finish. 
Cabot also makes a finish that you can use and there's just multitude of choices to choose from, but those finishes still need maintenance. So every year or so you're gonna to need to pressure wash it and then put that finish back on there and just keep it maintained. You'll keep that color. Number four on the list, the question I got was, can you use pressure treated lumber for your outdoor projects? Yes and no. I don't like pressure treated lumber for furniture and things like that because it splits, it cracks, it bows, it bends as it starts drying out. It's just not, in my opinion, a good choice for outdoor furniture. Also, the, the chemicals they use to treat pressure treated lumber are not meant for skin contact. So if somebody's wearing shorts or put their arms on an armrest that's pressure treated, it may cause some skin irritation. So I would just avoid that for most outdoor projects. One thing it is good for is decks and things like that, which is what I built my deck out of. It's all pressure treated lumber, it's held up well. There's been a couple of boards that have bowed up pretty bad that I had to replace after it was initially put down. That's just the nature of pressure treated lumber. If you must use pressure treated lumber, I just really wouldn't build it for anything people are gonna be sitting on or eating on or anything like that. Number five, Mr. Link One wanted to know about the ongoing maintenance of outdoor finishes. I previously touched on this, but for the most part, you can expect to every year or two years, you're probably going to need to maintain that finish in some way. Now, oil-based finishes like the uh, Cabot Australian Timber Oil, I've had mine on for two years. It still looks good, I'm not touching it. Now, if it starts to fade, then I'll just take a pressure washer and wash that wash and wash the uh, project down and then restain it. Use a cleaner. I like to mix bleach with borax and a little water. It makes a really good cleaner for your deck or outdoor wood. And once it's dry, completely dry, then you'll reapply that finish. It's really not that big of a deal. Take you about a day, maybe two, and then you're back in business. Every two years, give or take. But that largely depends on the heat level, the humidity level, uh, just your weather in your area too. The number six question I got was what clear finishes work on outdoor projects? A lot of people don't want the natural color gone. They don't want to stain it. They want to leave it that natural color, especially if you use certain wood types. Again, general finishes, outdoor oil, Osmo UV protection, spar urethane even, although it can amber it a little bit. Those types are perfect for that clear finish you're looking for. Number seven, Firewolf Creative want to know the best and the worst woods to use for outdoor projects. I touched on pressure treated lumber already, but as far as the best woods to use that's going to last the longest, hold up the best to weather. You're looking at Ipe, I-P-E is how I spell, teak, mahogany. Those are all great choices, although they're very expensive compared to some of the others. Cedars, cypress, and white oak are also excellent choices for outdoor projects as they just hold up better. A lot of people frown on using pine, but I've had very good luck with pine. As long as you use the proper finish, as we talked about earlier, you'll be perfectly fine with pine like that. I've used it on a ton of stuff and it's held up extremely well. Pine's a very durable wood if you treat it right. One thing you don't want to use is red oak. While you can use white oak, white oak holds up very well in the weather, red oak doesn't. White oak has a substance in it called tylosis where red oak doesn't have it. So tylosis basically seals the wood grain up so it doesn't absorb as much water. Red oak doesn't so it pulls that stuff in like a straw. So it just absorbs more water and I would avoid that. Number eight, what's the worst wood you can use for outdoor furniture? Again, pressure treated lumber just shouldn't be used for furniture, in my opinion. Number nine, Mr. Bill Hawk wanted to know what's the best fasteners to use for outdoors. There's some you want to avoid, which we'll touch on, but for the most part, you want to stick to stainless steel screws if you can find them, or brass fasteners work well too. Craig also makes an outdoor screw that works extremely well, has that blue coating on there, and then deck screws and things like that also have a coating to prevent them from rusting. Now what you want to avoid for outdoors are zinc coated screws. They'll rust as well as black oxide screws, similar to what you would see in a drywall screw. Those rust extremely fast, and when they rust, you're gonna lose the integrity and they have the very high likelihood of breaking, especially if you're using them on benches and things like that that need some weight bearing. Number 10 on the list, Griffin Woodworks wanted to know the minimum spacing between the boards on tables, benches, things like that. That's a very important question because outdoor furniture goes through a ton of different environments. It's, sometimes it's hot, sometimes it's cold. So that expansion and contraction of the wood is more than what say goes on in your house. So what I like to do, especially on benches, tabletops, things like that, is leave a minimum of 1 8 inch between each board. And while most woods, even pine, softwoods, things like that will expand and contract, I don't think that anything more than an eighth inch is necessary in most cases. Now on seat slats, I do typically leave about a 3 8 inch gap. That's really only just to help that water drain off there faster so it just doesn't sit there. But an eighth inch is fine. It's just really up to you. But make sure you leave a little gap. 
for that water drainage as well as expansion and contraction. Here's a bonus tip for you. Wood glue matters on your outdoor projects. I really like Type Bond 3 for outdoor projects because if you'll notice on the label, it says waterproof exterior and interior. While Type Bond 2 says water resistant, it's really not meant for outdoor as much. It's, it, you can, but the Type Bond 3 is a better choice. If you'll notice their charts, they even recommend Type Bond 3 over Type Bond 2 for exterior projects. Type Bond 3 also has a higher PSI strength and it's just a better all around glue for outdoor projects, cutting boards, anything that's gonna get wet. You know what time it is, power tip time. If you want your outdoor woodworking projects to last as long as possible, especially those projects that are going to be sitting on the ground or sitting on a patio or a deck, then you need to seal that end grain of the feet that are touching the surface. One of the best things you can do is take some epoxy type glue like this from Gorilla Glue. Loctite makes some, there's several different models. I'll link to the description below what I use. Put a piece of painter's tape around it and then fill it about a 16th of an inch is all it's gonna take and let that dry. It'll take a couple of hours or so. It says five minutes, that's not true. It's gonna take it a little bit of time to dry. Once that's fully cured, you can take that tape off sand it down however you want and then put finish on your project that will help keep that water from absorbing on the ground up into the feet because of that end grain that's open right there seals that up there's five mistakes that ruin wood that 99 percent of the beginners don't know and if you want to see you got to click that box to watch the video click in the box get you the big old virtual fist bump also another one of my favorite videos right there